Hi, this is Wendy Galerner of Pace Turf, and this video, which we've titled What Makes a Grub a Grub, will give you some tips for identifying these important turf insects. We've been surprised over the years to learn that the word grub means many different things to many different people. So I'm going to start by quickly showing you some photos of insects that get called grubs, some of them correctly and some of them not. How about this soft-bodied soil-dwelling insect? Do you think that this is a grub? Or how about this one? It looks something like the previous insect, but it has no legs. Do you think this is a grub? This soil-dwelling insect is also sometimes described as a grub. Do you think this one's a grub? How about this insect? It's usually found on the foliage or the thatch on golf course greens. Let's go back and look at each of these insect types. If you said that this mass chafer larva was a grub, you would be right. In fact, the mass chafer and other related insects, such as the Japanese beetle, the oriental beetle, the black turf grass atinius, and others, are all known as white grubs. Some of the features that all white grubs share is that they live in the soil and feed on the roots of plants. They also share a soft, thick, white body, which is frequently, although not always, curled into the shape of the letter C. White grubs also all have three pairs of legs. A well-developed head is also an important characteristic of all white grubs. If you take a look at the head with a magnifying glass, as we've done in the upper right-hand corner here, you can see the powerful mandibles, or jaws, that are responsible for tearing precious turf roots to shreds. Finally, white grubs are the larval, or immature stage, of a large group of beetles known as the scarab beetles. These hard-bodied, shield-shaped adult beetles do not usually harm turf plants but it is much easier to identify and detect the adults as opposed to the grubs because the adults live above ground and are frequently seen flying around. Here's another insect that can be referred to correctly as a grub, even though it's not a white grub. And at first glance, the larvae of billbugs look a lot like white grub larvae because they're also soft-bodied and white, because they're frequently found in the soil, and because they're the damaging stage of the insect. Like the white grub, the adult billbug is also a beetle. There are some important differences between white grubs and billbugs, though. The most important distinction is that billbug larvae have no legs. They're just a head and a body and not much else. A related insect, the annual bluegrass weevil, has these same features. Another difference is that the adult billbugs and weevils have this great feature, this long Jimmy Durante-like snout. Still, despite the differences these insects have with white grubs, the lack of legs, and the very different appearance of the adult snout beetles, billbug and weevil larvae can also be correctly referred to as grubs. These two insects are also sometimes called grubs, but in these cases, the term grubs is used in error. Because although crane fly larvae and caterpillars are both soft-bodied, like grubs are, you'll notice that they're much longer and thinner than the grubs we discussed earlier. Here's a comparison to remind you of the differences in body shape. You'll also notice that the crane fly and the caterpillar are much darker in color than any of the grubs we looked at. But the main reason that caterpillars and crane flies are not called grubs is because they're very different evolutionarily from grubs. While grubs are all the immature stages of various beetles, caterpillars like the cutworm are the immature stage of a completely different group of insects, the moths and butterflies. And leather jackets are the immature stage of a group of insects known as crane flies. The adults are large flies that are closely related to mosquitoes. So, to recap, the features that are shared by insects that are called grubs are their soft, thick, light-colored bodies, their well-developed heads, their presence in the soil or inside plants, and the fact that they are the immature stage of beetles. Why is it even important to know what defines a grub? Well, in addition to being able to communicate better with your peers, 
It turns out that because grubs are all fairly closely related, the management practices, including insecticide products, are very similar for all grubs. The products shown here have all been tested in multiple university trials, and all have shown good to excellent activity against grubs, white grubs, weevils, and billbugs. For more information on identification, management, and control of grubs, don't forget to visit the PACE Turf member website at www.paceturf.org.